Good afternoon. So I picked up uh, another bargain today. The um, reason I picked this up is I've had uh, miter saws in the past and I've actually had this. This was one of the first ones I ever bought was uh, uh, a Makita sliding compound miter saw. And I've actually got an older version of this that I've been using. The reason I have it is because I used to have a DeWalt 12 inch and it got stolen and I got tired of the fact that people just come and grab stuff out of the back of your truck or whatever and it just upsets me. So I am not buying brand new things that are just going to get stolen. So I picked this up uh, for $75 with the stand and I'm thinking like that is one heck of a good bargain but it comes at a cost. There's going to be some uh, some sweat equity in this in this here it's not going to be a huge rebuild i don't have to do uh like bearings uh there's no wiring there's no nothing like that most of it's adjustment and lube and just final fitting but if you take a look at this i'm going to show you if you uh, ever want to buy uh used tools here's some of the things that you want to look for so um the guy that i bought it from uh he trimmed out his house with it and that's all he did with it was uh, uh trimmed out the house with new casing and baseboard and he bought it used and he said once I was done he says I was going to get rid of it which is what he did so I picked it up from him uh, it's got a very uh, aggressive blade on here this is not the kind of blade that you want on a miter saw it's actually quite dangerous so that will be one of the things that gets taken off but let me take you a, a closer look here at what it is so uh, it does have a laser and I turned it on and it does work, but uh, there's something blocking it. So I think there's just a lot of dust and debris. You can see just on the shroud here that it's, uh, it's covered with dust as well. And you can see it's a bit rusty right there. Okay, so this thing was probably sitting uh, in a garage, an unheated garage. And that is the reason for this as well. You can just see a little bit of rust, but all of that is cosmetic most of that can be cleaned up I'm missing the wrench to take off the uh, the blade but I do have one uh, whoever had this uh, before uh, they never bolted it down properly <laughs> you see these things are just kind of willy-nilly -nil uh, <laughs> sitting there and I think this one only has one bolt on it here uh, the throat plate's been damaged I'll probably just uh, replace that with something brand new uh, and then here the spring okay so this all needs lube in here and uh, and then that's basically it so a lot of it's just plain cleanup and a little bit of elbow grease I haven't checked everything for uh, parallel yet and for 45 and 90 and so on like that but I will be checking that and those adjustment uh, uh, screws are right here this one and that one and then on the other side is the same so those are the ones that you need to adjust for that but I also want to get making sure that the tilt mechanism works fine and that that's lubed up so I'm gonna get started Piece of junk. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this laser pivots out of the way like this. So you can lift it up a little bit, but then there's a little part here, a little plastic part here. And you can see that it's just gotten a little dirty here. So I'm going to get that cleaned off. I, might, eh, I think I'll put uh, a little bit of soap and water on that. So I got my line working there. You can see if, if you shift it around, you can just see it moving just slightly there. Okay. So that, once I get the blade on, I can kind of figure out where that's going to be. And I think I'm probably going to, not exactly sure how I'm going to position this yet. If it's going to be to the left of the blade, right of the blade or center. FYI, make sure that that thing is good and clean. I ended up taking a citrus sol uh, solvent uh, to clean that off. Nothing, anything harsh, nothing with any kind of chemical like uh, lacquer thinners. <laughs> that would destroy this thing. But uh, that, I was able to get most of the gum off because this is the side that's underneath here. And it gets blasted with, uh, uh, with wood chips and shavings and all kinds of things. So just remember, if you need to clean it, just take out this one screw here. That slides out. You can clean it, put it back in, put the screw in, and it's done. This thing here, find the middle, and now you can position your laser wherever you want it. If you want it center, left hand, right hand, however you want it. I think I'm just going to put it in the center of the blade. Here's another critical piece right here. This part pushes up against that plastic guard and you can see it needs to be lubed at this point here. So it's pinned at the end here and it does move a little bit, but then right here, that needs to have lubrication so that that arm moves freely. And you can see it's just rubbing just ever so slightly on there. So I'm gonna make sure that that has a little bit of adjustment to it. Now look what I did. Busted the bolt off in here. Anyways, got to fix that because this is that uh, part for that throat plate that goes in the middle here. So I'll have to grind that flush and then drill it out. So I pulled uh, the bolt out of the middle here and that's the thing that uh, this whole table pivots on. Like this way, okay. Well, you got to get that, uh, you got to put a little bit of Loctite on when you put it on there, but make sure that this moves nice and freely. The other thing is you want to have this so that it doesn't pivot. So if you lift it up and down that this, this whole table doesn't go up or down that way. So you want to get it just right and then let the Loctite set for overnight and you're good to go. But don't move it after it's done. Make sure you get it right. Finished out with a bit of penetrating oil and a red scotch bright pad. There we go. Not perfect, but way better. That works as well on planar uh, posts as well. If you ever have a little bit of corrosion, red scotch bright oil. Okay, this thing's all lubed up. Put oil all inside there so that uh, everything will move quite nicely. Okay, we got the spring. You come on.
and you just want to test it, make sure that everything works good before you do anything more to it. Yep. There we go. So here's the underside. And uh, you can see here that there's still a little bit of corrosion that I still need to clean up with uh, the scotch Brighton oil. Uh, everything else looks pretty good. Just going to clean up these things as well. There's just, well, it's there. Might as well do it. Uh, but the rest of it's pretty clean. Just a little bit of uh, sawdust underneath there that just needs to be cleaned up. And I was wondering why this thing was not uh, sitting on that stand properly. And look at this. Here's... Uh, one of these, it, it just kind of catches the bar. <laughs> it was a flip down. There we go. Fixed. Simple problem. But most of this is just, at this point, is uh, lube and basic cleanup. Just a little uh, trick for anybody that uh, is going to be restoring one of these or has one of these. And if they find that uh, their outfeed rigger here is not parallel... Okay, I'm going to show you something right down at the bottom here is a screw, a little grub screw, and you can use that to move this thing up or down. So if you need to adjust that, that's how you do it. So when I put my locking handle down here, it doesn't pull this thing tight against those rails. So inside here is a screw right there. That just needs to be adjusted. It needs to be pushed into position and there's a lock nut in behind it. I think most saws work something similar to this. If it's uh, if you're finding it's kind of sloppy on your uh, on your machine, this is the kind of thing you need to do. Go look for stuff like this that can secure it to your stand. So I've got to make a throat plate for this. Now the original one was made of plastic here. So I'm thinking I'm going to try to make one in wood and see how it works. I can use this as a template because it can be turned either way. So that's all right. So I measured the distance. If I went like this, it's about five eighths of an inch from the bottom here to the top side of the thing. So I'm going to get a five eighth piece, 13 and three eighths by two and a quarter wide. And then I'm going to make a little bit of a rabbit in here with a couple of uh, holes in it for the screws to go in and then one at the far end. So that's kind of the plan. So I'll show you what I'm uh, making next. All right, so five eighths thick, two and a quarter wide, little uh, rabbit in here so, uh, so I can adjust it a hair. <laughs> uh, uh, stupid joke. Anyways, so um, what I got to do now is I've got to bore two holes in here to get past these little round notches and then there. And then this has to be slightly scalloped up. And I might just do that on the, uh, on the joiner, just kind of carve that out because it goes from almost to nothing down to probably about there, which is about two and a half inches. So I got to come up with something that scoops that out. But anyways, the plan is to put this on here, mark out my holes, and get them drilled out. So, got this done. Just drilled out a couple of uh, bigger holes here to go over top of these little notched out areas. And then just trim that out with uh, the miter saw. Anyways, it fits now. That one screw that I busted off, so I made another one out of a uh, screw that you use for like any kind of hardware, like handles or knobs or something like that. So I think that'll work in here. Yep. So that worked out well. Now I can just finish putting the rest of them in and uh, I can test this thing out. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> yes. So 
the one thing I got to do is I got to get this a little deeper here to get it past the fence here. So I'm just going to raise this up a little bit in the back here and see where I'm at. That's it. So everything now is working as it should. Tilt mechanism. It's got nice set at 90 there, and it's got a detent for your crown molding as well. And table, oh, like butter. All right, so let's test this thing now. That's a hundred percent. Yep. If you have to, you can always adjust it with those bolts right here, uh, this one and that one. And on the other side, there's a corresponding one. So that is the way you would adjust it. I don't need to do anything. So that's about perfect. All right. So check for 90. You got to get in between the two teeth. And that is right on. Don't have to do any adjustment. So here's how you test out the bevel. See if it's accurate. Okay, get that on there. And you can see it's out by a 32nd of an inch over about two, two and a quarter inches. So you adjust that on the back side right here and you just adjust this out or in. So I'm going back that way. Hopefully I got it in the right direction. And there we have it. It's perfect right now. So that's for your tilt at 45, that one right there. And there's another one on the other side. One last thing, when you are figuring out that angle to make sure that this is perfectly 45, uh, make sure that when you, you calculate this, that you have this locked in place. Because if you have it just slightly out, Okay, you can, the weight, here, you can actually see the saw move. Watch this. Watch this thing right here. Okay, tightening it up. You see how that is? Okay, so that's going to make a big difference on your cut. Like, so if you're ever wondering why your cut is not uh, being straight at 45, that's the reason. So set it at 45, lock it in place. So when I'm saying set it at 45, what I mean is, Make sure that now that's 100% 45. Adjust your cursor to exactly where it is and then make your cut. It'll always be parallel so long as you lock down your cut. If you leave it in that 45 position just on its side like that, you're not going to get a straight cut. So here's what I mean. Okay, that's a, a miter on about an eight inch piece. There we go, 100%. So that's what I mean, make sure you lock down your, your handle at the back side when you're running miters, because that has to be perfect when it runs that cut. All right, so the machine's all Basically back to factory settings again. So everything is working just beautifully. There we go. All the detents are all working. I know that if I want 45, I got 45. If I need 22 and a half. And uh, so that's just brilliant.
but I paid $75 for it. I got roughly about two hours into the cleanup and uh, making the throat plate and just getting it to where it is now that it's uh, back to 100%. But at the end of the day, it didn't spend a lot of money and I am not replacing tools that get stolen with brand new stuff anymore. And I'm quite happy to have an older thing like this that works perfectly. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed watching this and, and if you have a saw like this, it may help you do the repairs on it yourself. Otherwise, it's very similar for any of the other miter saws out there. They work roughly about the same, but this one, uh, just a couple of little things that are uh, helpful for you if you own one. Anyways, have a great day.